How the hell did you do it? Well, as you know, Jim, uh, we launched Ogadal back in 2003 and wanted to make, you know, a really luscious expression of our bag. And since then, you know, I, with a passion, have been uh, trying to perfect the balance of Ogadal, dipping my nose into all the really ancient stocks that I'm sure you'll remember from the 1970s. Absolutely. They were really deep in peaty, peatiness and smokiness and lots of really uh, deep, deep fruitiness as well. There was a richness, wasn't there? Richness it? to it, absolutely. Really rich aromas. Um, and also weaving all these ancient stocks in with some of the, the stocks that we've distilled um, in, the, in the 90s um, since uh, Glamorangy acquired our big distillery in 97 and some of these stocks are of our highest peating levels. But, but what blew me away with this was the fact that this was really the first Arbeg that I tasted that reminded me of the Arbegs mm. of the early 80s when all the peating was done at the distillery it was, it was a different kind of Arbeg then mm. and here you've got the intensity and you've got that saltiness as well mm -hmm. which brings everything else out and that was what that made me kind of sit up and go, wow, you know, th mm. this, this, is, this is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is really the uh, ex finest example of the art of whiskey creation in our bag, of being able to uh, select from our stocks the, the richest aromas, the most robust strengths, and fuse that together with, um, with uh, you know, wonderful herbal st stocks as well to give um, a whisky that is at once luscious, rich, deep, but also with a perfect balance and complexity. When you put this one together, because as we all know, all bottlings are slightly different from others. Mm -hmm. When you put this one together, did like me, you, you, you mm -hmm. think, wow, this is different. Or was it like, mm, yeah, we've gone on another step. You know, d did you realise that this really was special? Absolutely. Right. I think, like yourself, you know, it was very much a eureka moment <laughs> in 2007. Yeah. And, you know, we had this pursuit to, uh, to try and achieve this perfect balance in the glass of Ugadal. And um, it was by 2007 that, that we believed, yeah, we, we've, we've got it. You know, we, we've, we've got that, uh, that perfect balance. I mean, what do you find, Jim? You're, you're already... No, dipping your nose in the glass, what well, do you find when you Well, you know that the, the thing that gets me is balance, mm. okay? And straight away on the nose, the thing that got me was that salt. Mm. And that was something, I wouldn't say had been lost, but it was something that yet, yet had to be attained, if you like, from the, from the newer stocks. And it, and it took me right back. So that was the first thing that got me. Then you get the sherry as well. But it's clean sherry, there's no sulfur or anything like that. It's absolutely top grade stuff. Again, very old fashioned style. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think what gets me is that this is almost like a time capsule. It, it transports you back to an almost lost style. Mm. Um, so on the nose, you've, you've got that balance of the salt, the sherry and the peat, although it's enormous, it is so beautifully integrated mm. and, and, uh, and you can't beat that. So that's on the nose mm. and to taste, mm -hmm. Of all the whiskies that I tasted in the world, this is the best for 2009. Rachel, brilliant. Congratulations. Thank you, Jim. I'm, I'm delighted that you have uh, named our Bega Goodall World Whiskey of the Year 2009. Yeah, all you got to do is do it again. Good luck. Absolutely. <laughs>